Right, so we are going to jump into the first formal system of logic we're going to explore in this course, categorical logic. This is a system for thinking created by the very famous philosopher Aristotle after he had studied for 20 years under Plato back in ancient Greece some 2300 years ago. It's a really old system for thinking, but I think you're going to see that it remains a really powerful system for thinking. Um, and you're probably going to see that we wouldn't be able to do things like science without a system of categorical logic. All right. So what you need to do before we move any further is you want to make sure that you have your chapters 2.1 to 2.3 summary handouts with you because you're going to have a ton of information coming at you in the next few weeks. And you want to make sure that you're writing down uh, all the things that I tell you to write down as well as things that you hear us talk about in these lectures that you think is worth remembering. Okay, so you want to make sure you have those summary handouts uh, with you. And you also want to make sure you have something to write with and something to write on because you're going to have to be working through problems I give you in this lecture. You can't learn by just sitting there and passively listening to me yammer on about categorical logic. You're going to have to actually do these problems because that's how you're going to learn how to do this is by doing. All right, so let's start here. If we're going to study categorical logic, we should probably have an understanding of what exactly a category is. So what is it? Seriously. Yeah, like a class, group. Absolutely. So when you think about categories, we're talking about classes of things, right? We're talking about um, ways that we organize things by into groups. So you probably have a sock drawer in your home and you probably also have a spice cabinet in your home. And hopefully you know not to put socks in your spice cabinet or spices in your sock drawer, right? So you recognize that different kinds of things belong or should be treated in certain ways based on the classes or groups of things that they uh, are members of. When we talk about categories for our purposes, when we're exploring categorical logic, we want to think about categories of countable things. This is going to be really important for us, that the things that we make arguments about in categorical logic, they need to be things that we can count. So for example, when you look at this image, there's things that are countable like banjo strings. There's five of them. You see there's a certain number of hats in this image. There's a certain number of people in this image. So when we're dealing with categorical logic, we always want to be focused on things that we can count, things that we can count and categorize. There's things in this image that you see, but you can't count. For example, I see brown in this image, but brown is not countable. I can't have five browns. Okay, I see, uh, I see this word sexy. Sexy is not countable, okay? But I can turn those things into countable nouns or noun phrases. I can say like, oh, this is a brown building, okay? We can count brown buildings. There's exactly one of them in this image. We can count sexy men. There's exactly one of them who's terribly sexy in this image right here. He's terribly sexy because he's holding a banjo, of course. All right, so we're looking at countable categories of things. And what we're going to do with categorical logic is we're going to take these categories of countable things and we're going to demonstrate ways that they may be related to other countable categories of things, right? So like there's a particular relationship between that exists between banjos and musical instruments. There's a certain relationship that it doesn't exist between banjos and automobiles, right? And so these are countable categories of things that we can indicate are in certain relationships with one another. For our purposes in categorical logic, we're going to look at making three different kinds of arguments. Categorical immediate inferences, categorical syllogisms, and categorical sororities. And we're going to spend the next couple of weeks learning about uh, categorical immediate inferences, and you're going to learn how to make uh, valid categorical inferences, which are arguments that have exactly one premise that leads immediately to a conclusion. All right, so get ready. This is going to be fun.